Not everyone is suffering or making sacrifices during this pandemic. The richest of the rich are actually making a killing. Today, the coronavirus spread is getting worse in several hotspot states. Plus, a monster week for Tesla. And finally, the rich get richer, as the saying goes. And that's certainly the truth for Jeff Bezos, whose net worth ballooned in the first half of 2020. And while the rich literally get richer than they've ever been before, essential workers are being abandoned with no bailout in sight. Possibility of states being forced into bankruptcy is being floated. Senator Mitch McConnell, the majority leader, saying he is in favor rather than sending more funds to bail states out. I would certainly be in favor of allowing states to use the bankruptcy route. Budget cuts, furloughs, and even layoffs are on the horizon. And essential workers like us are now just a budget cut away from being on the streets. The situation has only gotten worse with this pandemic. We're called heroes one day, but can be zeroed out the next. Many of us are on the verge of being unemployed. Hi, I'm Patricia from Clinica Romero, and I'm also a COVID-19 survivor. Do you know some has been laid off or hours reduced due to the COVID-19 pandemic? Please answer in the poll that's about to pop up on your screen. Millions of Americans across all industries are already being laid off, and many more are next. Make no mistake, you and I are not safe during this pandemic. To our national leadership, our health and safety are not a priority, and neither is keeping us employed. SEIU 721 members, along with thousands of other public workers, are at risk of being laid off or furloughed if elected leaders don't come up with the money needed to fund essential services. Board departments are preparing 5, 10, and 15% reduction scenarios. Our current estimate of the revenue loss stands at about 40 million. We've already enacted a hiring freeze in our city government, and that will continue in the coming year. Unfortunately, we must also face another painful reality, that our civilian employees will take 26 furlough days over the course of the next fiscal year, the equivalent of a 10% reduction in pay. The federal government has a moral and ethical and economic obligation to help support the states. After all, what is the point of government if not to protect people, their safety, and the well-being of citizens? The underfunding of vital public services is nothing new and has only gotten worse because of the pandemic. The HEROES Act would have provided $1 billion in funding for state and local governments. Instead, it stalled in the Republican Senate with no support from this administration. We need a Senate and an administration that is going to pass a fully funded HEROES Act. Hi, my name is DeJour. I work for Department of Children and Family Services. Well, you know, every time we come to the bargaining table, they always take and take and take, saying that they have no money. Well, brothers and sisters, let me tell you, what do you think contract negotiations will be like without the HEROES Act? Answer in the poll. This pandemic crisis is unlike anything we have ever seen. And while the year 2020 has been one of the most difficult for this generation, 2020 has also brought a once in a lifetime opportunity to turn the status quo around. On November 3rd, we have the chance to flip the script on how public services and essential workers are funded. For the first time in nearly four decades, we have the opportunity to close the tax loopholes that corporations use to avoid paying their fair share of property taxes by voting yes on Prop 15. Prop 15 will bring billions in revenue to California when we need it the most. That means we can finally meet the demand for vital services in our communities. But it doesn't stop there. We also have to vote no on Prop 22. 
we cannot allow corporations to write their own labor laws and avoid paying millions and millions in taxes. It will allow the companies to self-regulate, pay us as little as $5.64 an hour, and it'll be nearly impossible for this to be overturned in the future. So we need to say no on Prop 22. This pandemic has shown that our national leadership is ill-equipped to deal with any crisis. There is no corporate accountability, just billions in corporate giveaways while we beg for PPP. And our state and local governments get no relief. That's why it's time to vote for national candidates that stand with essential workers like us. It is you who are the backbone of America's middle class. It is you who keep things moving. It is you who represent the future and the promise of America. And it is you who deserve all the dignity that comes with the value of your hard work. I will always stand with you in arguing for what is just right and fair, for understanding that no one should ever be made to fight alone. But here's the deal. This is about a fight for your dignity. Your dignity, it's not just the numbers. It goes to the dignity of workers. Right. And the only one way you can fight back power is with more power, and that's union power. Unions are required. There's been a war on labor for a long time, and it's got to end. And here's what I'll end with. I promise you, I promise you, if I'm your next president, you'll never have had a better friend in the White House for working people and for unions than Joe Biden. I guarantee you, you will be there. This November 3rd, we must vote Biden and Harris. Our jobs and lives depend on it.